Chief of Outsourcing Firm iGate. Ashok Gumbri joins me here in Davos. Great to have you, Ashok. And, Thank you. Uh, how are you making of what are you making of Davos besides the cold, <laughs> which is not as bad as previous years? This Davos has been uh, very uh, benevolent to us. I think it's uh, back home from where I'm in New Jersey. They are the ones who are actually suffering. Uh, the, the impact of the winter storm. But it's been great. I think uh, Davos has always lived up to its expectations of being a change agent. Uh, I've had multiple conversations on cybersecurity, uh, the topic of inclusive growth. Uh, and uh, as always, you know, when I come to Davos and I leave here, I'm sure I'm going to be recharged with, with fresh and new ideas. But one big idea which seems to have crept up in IT CEO's mind, and I'm having this conversation with multiple CEOs here in Davos, is the fact that the Vianney Cobragadi's case in the United States uh, and the entire diplomatic fallout between the two countries has adversely affected Indian technology. I don't think so at all. In fact, uh, I think it's an unfortunate coincidence of events that has taken place. Uh, I don't think that kind of a spat is going to spill over from a technology perspective. Remember, the American clients, U.S. clients are extremely focused on doing business where they see the maximum productivity, the maximum uh, efficiency and effectiveness to their business. And in that regard, Indian IT has done yeoman service to uh, corporations around the world in driving these efficiencies, driving productivity, and essentially making them much more competitive in the marketplace. But you don't think that the U.S. will play a game which is eye for eye and say that we'll do something about the immigration bill because you created such hurdles uh, on this U.S. visa fallout? I think the immigration bill has been in play even before the incident happened. I think it will continue to be an important point of discussion. And as we, we, as we enter into a point of midterm elections in the United States for the Senate seats, as well as the, the, the elections, uh, this is going to be a topic right in center. But remember, the, the whole uh, the, the immigration documentation uh, is, has two and a half pages about H-1B visas, an 1,100-page document. I think outside of uh, uh, this, there are many other things that they need to correct, and I think this will be part of it, but they will be very conscious of the good work that's been done and the great partnership between IT companies out of India and uh, corporations in the United States. So Devyani Kupagade <coughs> hasn't made a difference to Indian IT and immigration bill will be far less benign than was feared? I think it will be less benign. It will definitely be something that we should watch out for and plan for. Uh, but it's definitely not such a big hole of as it's been made out in the past. Okay, I know while we are sitting here, clients are fixing their January end budgets. Yep. And what is the sense you're getting? Because the slowdown definitely has been seen over the last several months. So we actually think that uh, the budgets will come f slightly flatter or maybe higher, but the complexion of the budget is actually going to change as it has changed. Uh, so I'll give you an interesting statistic. 50% of the sales, I was just hearing uh, the Walmart CEO talk, 50% of Walmart sales in the December season did not happen on the internet, didn't happen in the store, happened on a mobile device. So mobility and mobile devices, which everybody was saying is the thing of the future, the future has come and it has exploded in our face. So you're going to see a very different expectation of Indian ID companies from our clients. You will see a different type of spend and you will definitely see a lot more money getting spent on analytics, on cybersecurity. Uh, you will see them getting spent on, on uh, mobility, uh, cloud. So this is going to be very distortive, if you will, for the Indian IT industry, which has progressed on a sort of a linear model of uh, you have a problem, I'll throw some bodies at it. And we'll move to what we are espousing to be a more platform-based, much more uh, utilitarian, uh, and much more uh, IP-led kind of a business model. But Ashok, you were in Infosys previously, and uh, your decision to move to iGate was much talked about, in fact, <laughs> because you were running a $4.7 billion unit that the largest, yeah. and were a potential CEO candidate. So that aside, and I'll come to that in a moment, Infosys tried that model in, in its previous uh, avatar. In fact, many said that the reason that Infosys failed was because it tried all these new technologies and forgot its focus in its basic core strengths. Yeah, so that's a little bit of a, uh, a pity because the, 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 the way it's been articulated is probably incorrect. Uh, we, I, I really think that the, the strategy that we are espousing in iGate, which is about platform-based solutions, it's about uh, utility kind of solutions, which is built on domain competency, overlaid with process capability, and heavy lifting technology is the way forward. Uh, you can get it right sometimes in terms of timing. You could get it wrong sometimes in timing. It does not mean that you stop doing the things that you've done in the past, but you add on layers. Uh, at this point in time and the conversations that I've had, I was just came out of the IT governor's meeting, which is a place that I've just recently been inducted into. 
everybody is talking about that this is the direction. People are talking about mobility, analytics, about cybersecurity. Well, we have oscillated uh, uh, in the tech world in 2013, unfortunately, between tech utopia and cyber ayabagada. So we have everything great about tech, mobility, devices, interconnectedness. At the same time, we have had the what I call the Snowden effect and the cybersecurity threats, 110 million people losing their data from targets. So we've had, we need to balance this in an appropriate way and drive the maximum mileage out of technology assets. And that, I think, people uh, such as ourselves in iGate will be very advantageously positioned to be able to leverage some of these assets that we are building. So iGate is going to look very different <clears throat> from the Infosys model? iGate is going to be a very different company from what it looked like one year ago. Uh, and it, we are focusing on building IP, we are focusing on building platforms. We want to focus on a few select clients and geographies where we are good at certain industries. Uh, and that's the direction we're going to take. We're going to build integrated technology operations platforms which are tangible, which we can take to the client, they can touch and feel, and we're going to underwrite the, our performance, and we're going to overlay that with process, domain, and technology competency. You know, Shok, a lot of people say that you move from zero to, you know, in 12 years to the, uh, from a manager to a CEO candidate in just 12 years in emphasis. So a lot of people ask why you quit emphasis at that point in time. Do you feel you made the right choice? You know, people leave organizations all the time. I have to say that Infosys has been an extremely uh, great place to work. I've probably worked with one of the finest people. So it's very fortunate to have great mentors, uh, people who actually built this industry, uh, who actually defined it and redefined it again and again. Uh, there are always challenges that you want to address. Uh, and here came a platform which I thought would be good for me to monetize some of the things that I learned. But I have to candidly admit that all I have learned, I learned an emphasis, as well as the ability to make the change of moving from emphasis to iGate. So many of your colleagues in emphasis have chosen a different domain, and that's politics. So Bala, Nandanilakini, and uh, there could be more coming. What do you make of this transition? I think everybody has to go after what, is their, what they're passionate about. And, and it's good if you have more uh, uh, in, uh, educated, professional people entering public life, especially in India. I think that will change the narrative, and I think that is already changing. That will change the conversation. And I think as we see in India more urbanization, uh, the ability to understand, appreciate, and act on some of the more urban-related issues uh, will be best addressed by people who've lived there, run large corporations. I mean, London is a is one, you know, the whole uh, UID program, that's, that's not trivial. Um, Bala has run a very, very large uh, operations and businesses. And so we have some very good competent people who are willing to get into public life, which was the biggest problem in India. In fact, I think we should celebrate the fact that all these people are coming out and saying, you know, I'm going to do my bit for the country. But elections is not making a difference to technology. That's one of the sectors which has been far, far insular to movements in the government, so change. Uh, it makes a difference what happens in the marketplace, for sure. Uh, but I don't think elections make that much of a difference to technology spends. All right, Ashok Wimery, many thanks indeed, and enjoy the rest of Davos. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you too. You.